Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lucid, and we're back. Your dreams, but they're my memes. And uh, we have a message from Abyssia. This turn, I, I am declaring war on Lanka by expanding into his territory. Hopefully, I don't bump either of his neighbors. Someone gave me his bless. I was close, but didn't expect the fate weaving. I'm waiting to turn back, or waiting to turn, waiting a turn to talk to Micklin for a nap. Because I want to make sure we have ownership of the Deer Tribe province undisputed. Hopefully the delay doesn't matter and bite me in the rear. I have initiated conversations with everyone except Lanka and Micklin at this point. I'm somewhat annoyed that my income is so crappy despite expanding decently. I've had three territories filled with undead. <clears throat> and the two I uh, took from Lanka have a combined income of around 30. I have so many crap income provinces. I'm a fan of having a caveman province... I have two, and I'll probably make those when it's time for sieging. Cool. I thought I would uh, point out a questionable judgment call on your... Oh, on my part. I want to fort the Deer Tribe <coughs> province, but I think that would be foolish to build there <coughs> before having a nap with both neighbors. I'm aware that Lanka... I'm aware of Lanka having assassins and seducers, so I, don't, I do need more commanders around my mages and priests. Um, however, I'm choosing to build an amphibious unit to flex on my Micklin border, uh, that I will be able to use. Okay. Oh God, reading is hard for me. Uh, we didn't discuss, this is too much detail. I, I can't handle it. It's, it's actually relevant information. This is the kind of stuff, it's just too much. Uh, and it's late at night and I can't read. <laughs> I signed a nap with Pangea and started construction of my first fort this turn. Uh, I've also started talking to my uh, northern neighbor, Helheim, to feel out if he'd be willing to join a war against TNN. I still need to find my western neighbor. I'm expanding westward, so I'll probably get to see it next turn. Hopefully no expected bump, unexpected bumps. All right. Okay, let's start with Abyssia. So he's declaring war on Lanka by going up in Lanka shit. Because he is now past his little line between the thrones. And is deep in Lankan land. Lanka has a lot of sacreds, though. Like, a lot. Um, and burning ones are normally kind of hard to kill because they have really high protection and a bunch of other things, but... I mean, like, Fire Shield, I think, will trigger Blood Vengeance. It's going to be a lot of Blood Vengeance procs. A lot of charged body procking. Uh, Fire Shield isn't going to do anything from Lanka's side. Um, okay. Oh god, he's kind of expanding like nuts. These Abyssians really do enjoy a, a bit like that. A lot of it's the larger bless, but a lot of it's also the, um, the, the bonus hit points. They really do enjoy more hit points. Because once they go Berserk, they're really fierce, that bonus protection. I don't think this is in any way like an optimal Abyssia build, but uh, they do a, they do definitely enjoy this uh, bonus hit points. And of course, uh, in case you forgot, it's an imprisoned uh, regeneration build on them too. So they're going to become really hard to deal with in, if they can make it to the late game. Okay. Um, so I think that's really all for Abyssia. He found a wild forest, which is going to give him a nature gem every turn, which I'm, I, I imagine he would like. Uh, Ulm, however, expanding down here, only loses one steel warrior, taking out a big pile of barbs. Let's take a look at our manly men here. 41 damage. Coming through. <laughs> there actually are funny things you can do with them that I didn't really talk about. But um, you can stack strength buffs like Strength of Giants even more onto this, which is pretty cool. I believe you also have access to Air Mages. Which, um, Bows of War become pretty hilarious when you stack... Yeah. So they get 
uh, two gym bows of war, which is pretty funny when you're stacking like, I, I'm not sure, who would you put it on? What kind of commander? You'd, it would, you'd want it to be sacred. Um, wouldn't be the smith. It'd probably be these guys. The nature randoms, they can do uh, eagle eyes. Um, <clears throat> and then they can buff like earth might onto themselves. Uh, they don't have great precision. But that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would be those guys. And, uh, yeah, I mean, let's let's see what it what what this would look like. Did I click the right thing? Uh, 25 strength. I think a bow of war. I mean, they're going to be getting a third of that. Yeah, I think I think it's a third rounded up too. Or maybe it's not rounded up. I can't. Maybe it's rounded down. But yeah, I mean that is a lot. <laughs> it's like what eight strength or something, eight or nine, depending on how the rounding works. That is nuts. Or eight or nine damage from the strength, and then you could easily put gear on and get that up even higher. That's pretty funny. <laughs> okay, Pangea expanding over here. Uh, this looks pretty funny. Race car centaurs versus six elephants. You hold still to go real fast. Oh, just ignore them. Go yeet the commanders in the back. Ease clap. They killed one white centaur. That is not bad. I know, two, I guess. They probably got one on the retreat. We're not even really in that calm. I just couldn't help. Okay. And Lanka's massing a big army here, looking like they're getting ready to take this. Lanka's a little slow in expanding. They haven't really set favorable borders anywhere. But they have a lot of units. They have a lot of militia. Are they recruiting militia? Are those from a, an event? A religious zeal. Okay. Yeah, they got militia. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, next, we have Ubar. Grippa. Violently breaking out of his cap. Kills these barbs with uh, what I would call acceptable attrition. Not bad. Ooh, Lanka loses here. We didn't cover this. Kinda, oh, he's gonna maybe get the commander. No? These guys have bucklers, so they can kind of block some of these projectiles, but... How many guys are dead already? None are dead, but a lot of them are kind of beat up. All right, still none are dead. Still none are dead, but there are a few that are just <coughs> barely holding on to life. Okay, we, I think we had a couple die there, no, just one. Oh, and then they failed the HP route. Wow. So they didn't actually, a lot of them didn't die at the beginning. Why were these guys stuck here? Are they low? Huh. Okay, so he only loses one in Sura. But they just, I mean, that's actually kind of good. I mean, 
a few more hits, they could have died, but they also could have taken the province. So it's a little annoying for sure, but... Yeah, I mean, this would not normally be a hard province to take. But, I mean, the Slingers actually do pretty reasonable damage to these guys. Okay, anyway, Grippa, over here. Got a ton of camels. Squad of mercs. And a big fat dream of clearing his cap circle. Uh, coming down Micklin. Micklin has been doom stacking around, and uh, that appears to continue. Got a sparse line, maybe to deal with archer fire. A couple guys turn into jack. Oh, did he lose one? No, he lost a warrior. Not a jaguar warrior. Okay. I'd like to see Micklin splitting up a bit more. Like having another expansion party. I think this probably could have been two. I and mean, while this bless is super weird, it should be able to expand pretty well against indies. And I say should, like, in a pretty loose air quotes. Right? Because... I mean, I haven't tested it. <laughs> I don't think anybody has tested this build before. Um, Hinnom, meanwhile... I don't think we had any Hinnom expansions. No. But they've got a force... A big force in their capital. Um, I'm guessing they want to come take these war elephants out. Um, and then they're, they're going to hit this probably this turn. Uh, there's a chance they bump... Uh, they bump Ubar. We'll have to see. Uh, okay, that's that. And then Kalem. Spirehorn Warriors take out some heavy cap. This looks pretty good. Looks like they sniped the commanders here. Otherwise, they would have more losses. There's a lot of commanders, though. They've made their way through a lot of them. There's three mounted commanders left. They really don't want to eat a lance charge before the route takes place. Okay, they got the commander. These guys are now piecing out. <clears throat> and Caleb's had pretty good expansion. Like, these are technical. Like, this looks like he won pretty soundly. And he did, but man, it was close. Like, if this heavy cav, like, got the lance charge in, if one of the commanders didn't die... Like, if this would have been a... I think they still would have won, but it would have been bloody. Oh, no. Helheim attacked Trogs. Does he have friendly dominion? He has fear, but he has no awe. So he is out of friendly dominion. He's got a lot of hit points, though. He's got a burning pearl, so he's going to kill two guys a turn. Uh, but he dies very, very quickly. Because they have two claw attacks. So that, I mean, this is a lot of attacks. It's two 23 damage attacks. I mean, he died faster than I would have thought, but holy shit. I don't think all would have saved him. It might have. They only have like nine morale. And he's pretty killy. It might have been even wasting that first turn on, on animate skeleton rather than just attacking. I don't know. That's a that's a big that's pretty shitty. Cause you really want Big Bird around to like absorb hit points for this first part of the game. So he's going to have to spend quite a few turns summoning him back. It's going to slow his research down, a bunch of things. He does have a library, so he can get sages, but that is definitely a zinger. Otherwise, he had pretty good expansion, though, over here. Taking out some indies. I don't think any of these are particularly... This is a heavy cap battle. We'll watch this. Thank you. 
all doing a lot of work right there. <clears throat> Their morale is already down to five. Wow. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, the Bless is not going to be active after combat, or for the next few turns, so he's going to maybe have to be a bit more careful with the expansion. Kirby's going to be able to come back from this, because he's a good player, but... It's definitely a zinger, and it feels so bad when your Raven of the Underlord dies this early, because it's like... I don't know. I mean, you really want him to be getting a lot of hit points early. Okay. Tirnanog expanding pretty well. Let's see. Uh, let's see if he's using the javelins or not, because it may be that it's not optimal, but it's definitely cool. Gosh, these guys are thick. Look at this. Thirty-one damage. Tin Strength and Blood Surge. I kind of wanted to see the Javelins, but I have a feeling it, it doesn't do as well. I think in mass against elite player units, though, it's different. Okay. Things are looking all right. Things are looking all right. Baratos, cosplaying as Fire Shield Genies. This is Prophet. And they are trying to snipe that commander, though. Uh, okay. Takes this out. Oh, Barbarian's Attack. Kill some archers. That's a bit of a zinger. <clears throat> oh, Pangea's Cap gets attacked by Barbs, so he's going to lose population from this, too. That sucks. That sucks a lot. Uh, but <laughs> that is the cost of Misfortune 3, and God knows we have Misfortune 3 on this build. <laughs> It's still shitty luck. But the centaurs go vroom. I guess you have to go get a new capital now. Tian Chi. Expanding pretty well. Warriors of the Five Elements here. Got a big party here in his capital. I guess he's going to go after these Bone Tribe. Which, by the way, are amazing for Tian Chi to get. Um... Because I don't think they have the Death Air Cross Path. I know they get M Master of the Dead. Yeah, but they're just Death 1. And then none of the other guys have, have Death Access, I don't believe. Oh, this guy can get it. Okay, they can get it, so it's not as big of a deal. It's still pretty rare. But very cool. Uh, okay, I think we have time to do another turn. Let's go ahead and jump into turn 10. All right, and we're back with turn 10. We have a message from Helheim. Uh, this is Kirby. So I tested throwing in the Raven versus Trog solo, and he does perform better with all. So I should have just waited for it. Nobody else is going to care to take the Trog cave, so it's not like there's a rush. Silly me. Well, anyway, it's fine. I'll just call him back, and the Hell Herdings can expand uh, without a bless well enough. Makes for good YouTube. Wish me luck that he gets an extra rare death path from dying. It's possible. It's possible. Uh, since he sent us a message, let's go to Helheim first. Helheim, where are you? Here we go. Baratos expands there. No bump. These guys are here. He's got some Valkyries. The Valkyries, probably more than the other guys, are going to enjoy a bless. They kind of ran in by themselves and are going to lose a few. They've got pretty nice stats, though. 
They definitely would enjoy the uh, the bless. <clears throat> so it looks like just one expansion from Helheim. And he's probably very busy calling his god back. You know, it's honestly kind of worth thinking about. If you have like an awake expander god, like just dropping a casual unforted temple down and making human priests. Uh, that way, if there's a decent chance he's die, you know, he dies, you have a stockpile of like 15 guys who are out spreading your dominion. Um, you know, they don't have a ton to do, but you know, you can have like 10 guys sitting around, so you don't have to like completely stop research if he dies. I don't know, 10's maybe a lot, but maybe like eight or something could make a, a pretty nice dent in that. Anywho, Helheim still expanding. Kalem, Kalem might be the biggest. Oh no, the biggest is Abyssia. Where's Kalem? I thought Kalem was really big. Okay, they're number two, but a distant number two. Holy shit. I had no idea Abyssia was so big. Um, he was complaining to us in the, the last turn about having, uh, poor income despite the fact that he's so big. Let's see if that bears out. Well, he's still number one in income. Can't cry too much. Okay. Kalem expands here. Pretty solid. Yeah, I'd say this looks fine. This looks real fine for Caleb. Does he have any forts coming up? A fort's under construction here. This is a real nice province for early age. All right, so just one fort coming up so far. Looks pretty good. Tirnanog, taking this out with pretty minor losses. Gets a nice farm province. Steroids in the Olympics. Where did the other guys go? Hmm. He should have had another... I thought he had two parties running around. I'm not really sure where they went. I'm not really sure where they went. Uh, he still has a lot of expanding to do. I think the big risk for him is like, Caleb's done expanding, and Tiernanog still has a lot left to do. So there's a decent chance Caleb masses... Like, if Caleb picks a war with Tiernanog, Tiernanog's basically out of the game. Not even... Like, even if he wins the war, like, even if he kills the Caleb invading force... Because in order to do that, <clears throat> he'll have to, like, shut expansion down. That doesn't make it a good mood for Kalem. Kalem shouldn't do it unless they not only would... Like, just screwing over Tirnanag isn't a good idea, right? But, like, if Kalem could win the war, then it would be worth it. I don't think Kalem's in a hurry. They can mass up troops and just outnumber them. And, like, elves do not like archers. So the Kalem strat is to literally, like paint the sky black with arrows that are all imbued with all sorts of weird magics. And I think that's that. And we've covered Helheim. So coming over to Baratos. Let's watch these, uh, these fake genies go. Summoning some gin. I don't know if that's really needed. Maybe it is. No, these guys still have a ton of hit points. Probably wouldn't need it. Okay, nevertheless, a successful expansion. Expands here safely as well. Is this my dominion? How the fuck did I get Dominion over here? What's been there from an event? Have people been led astray by the prophets of a false god? What kind of Dominion do I even have? I don't even know where my capital is. But I don't know. <laughs> That's pretty funny, though. I mean, I can't have worse scales than they have, right? Like... Oh, God. All right. Anywho. That's Baratos. Pangea. Let's see some hot race car action. Welcome to Formula One. Oh, these guys are going to run in and die. Oh, my God. No, they're not. 
<laughs> you literally have to do like slow motion photography to see this. Gosh, they're so angry. God, look at that. <laughs> I just watch this again. I was like, oh, these guys are gonna split up and they're gonna die first. Nope. Meow. No losses. And G's expanding pretty well too. I think they're also tied for second. Yeah, that's looking real nice. Uh, TNG though has a favorable border here with uh, with Pangea. Oh, fighting slingers with Warriors of the Five Elements. These guys do not like fighting ranged units. It's actually really weird. Like you normally are not worried about slingers, but slingers will fuck these guys up. The heavy infantry, they're like, yeah, no problem. See all the weapon blesses. Okay, loses three. Uh, heavy infantry got actually two of the three kills. Here, he takes out some heavy cav. Again, heavy cav aren't really a problem with these. He might put, like, lance catchers out. Yeah, it looks like he did. Oh, no. See, that's actually not really a problem. They have pretty high defense. You can get, you know, one yeeted by a... Oh! They ha so this is one of the weird things. The way uh, Strength of the Spring works is you get minus hit points in uh, the fall. But uh, this is the winter now, so it shouldn't exist. But you carry over the minus hit points from the previous turn. It's a pretty bad trait. Definitely a net negative, in my opinion. But okay, he's carving out a nice bit of land for himself. And uh, yeah, that covers that column. Coming over to Lanka. Lanka's been, you know, struggling to expand a little bit. Here he's got some Mansara. They roll these indies. Burning ones moving out from Abyssia. The problem with like little raiding squads like this, if you're going to attack Lanka, is like he could flank you and just kill your commander. The only problem with that is these guys are going to still go berserk and fight you. Okay. Anyway, success. Uh, Lanka moves a big squad up here. Abyssia... Oh, actually, straight up attacks Lanka here. God, this is a nightmare if you're Lanka. You're trying to finish up expansion. It's been a little slow, and you've got turn 10, somebody already attacking you, and, like, in a position to raid, and this, that, and the other. Or, like, move here and defend. I don't know. What do you do as Lanka? I think you probably have to defend this province from Abyssia. Probably want to take this one. So I'd probably move this guy here. Move some people from the cap here to defend. I mean, you would like to keep expanding. I think you move these guys to defend here. Move these guys to defend here. But then Abyssia could just come here and... Could they fight the elephants? Maybe. No, that's right. That would be good, forcing Abyssia to fight elephants, because he might lose a burning one or two doing that. But you want to come over here and take this stuff. You know, but you kind of can't. Got Pangea getting all up in Ulm shit. Ulm coming over here, continuing to expand with what is essentially like a doom stack. And I think that makes sense. When you have when you have neither great defense, when you don't have great defense, you want to kill things really quickly. Uh, so you really do want to outnumber the enemy with a with the killy build. Okay. Uh, Abyssia. Yeah, they're just expanding, expanding, expanding right into Lanka. I think how this build matches up, though, is like... I don't think this actually is a great war for Abyssia, because... The Insurers hit really hard. They hit hard enough to go through the protection of Abyssians. Um, they are going to die like flies to Abyssia, but they're going to take a lot of these guys with them with the charged body, with blood vengeance. 
Like these are not things that you're going to be easy for Abyssia to deal with. What is in Abyssia's favor is all the bonus hit points they have is going to help mitigate a lot of this return damage coming in. So I don't know. I bet you if you had like an equal gold in a fight, uh, Abyssia would probably trade like almost like two to one to his advantage against Lanka. The problem is it's really hard for Abyssia to get two like even gold in a fight because Lanka can make a lot more of these troops. And Lanka is also going to have other chaff, which isn't going to be amazing against burning ones. Burning ones are pretty... You, the solution to burning ones usually isn't bring more chaff, but you know it can help and allow the the Ansuras to get more hits in before they die. But this is going to be a pretty interesting war. How how's Lanka doing on expansion? And the graphs. Okay, they are distinctly middle of the pack, but Abyssia is like actually twice as big as them. All right, very interesting. All right, coming over to Ubar. Grippa? Getting some of the gnomes killed off. I approve of that. Never trust a gnome. Abyssia. God, look at him. Taking all this land. It's like, this is mine. That's ridiculous. Um, that said, this particular... Uh, Bless we have for Ubar. It's not going to be great against Abyssia because it's like, I mean, the Blood Vengeance will be kind of fine, but like the Fire Shield isn't going to do anything. And I'm pretty sure, well, these guys don't have magic weapons. I don't know. I wouldn't really want to send my gen into Burning Ones, but thinking about it, because they don't have magic weapons and they don't have Spirit Sight, they might be okay, but they still are going to have pretty high attack score. I don't think I'd want to send Sultan in there, but you never know. Ubar continuing to expand uh, one province at a time on turn 10. Turn 10, Grippa pulling in a very solid five total provinces. <laughs> to be fair, this build is, this is about as weak of a build as you could have for Ubar early game. It, it literally gives him nothing to, to work with. Um, but it's about to wake up. So we'll see what he does with it. Uh, Lanka. He moves over this way. Takes out these Crystal Amazons. This is a great province to have for Lanka. Crystal Amazons are most appreciated by him. Because uh, they can form communions anyway. Um, and so being able to put air in a communion is a really big deal. So that's super nice. <laughs> This is one Jaguar here. So this is nice. This is like the kind of expansion I was expecting to see rather than the Doomstack. And they have enough hit points. They can really face tank some of these. Like these Lance Charges. Yeah, this I think he underexpanded with this build. This build should expand pretty well. Cuz he's one of the smaller nations, I believe. Yeah. He's at the bottom of the pack kind of. Not like Grippa level bottom of the pack for expansion, but he's kind of bottom of the pack. He could have if he wasn't running like this could be at least two expansion like two very solid expansion parties. I think now, it's possible he playtested this build and knows it better than I, I do, because obviously I haven't played it in a game, but it's just my, my guess, my intuition. Um, Hinnom with no battles. We've already talked about that, though. Okay, and I think we're back to where we started. I think we're back to where we started. And with that, I think we'll call it an episode. We'll see you guys next time on turn 11.